All right, Joseph. I thought I thought it'd be good to give the oral history of Frome up to this point. So it is uh, December. What do we got? Seventh. Okay, December is it for Harbor Day? December seventh, two thousand twenty-two. Twenty-two. Um, let's give. Let's go through it, man. Let's take it. Let's take them way back to the beginning. Very first. Okay. Yeah. yeah first so time you ever like Doc Brown, Back to the Future, falls off the I toilet. Think, I actually don't think you know the full. I don't story. think I do either. All right, let's go. All right, so. As far back as I think, remember your kids are gonna watch this one day and be like, "My dad." So you know what's is- crazy is uh, it had to be 2016. Moved to the city from Staten Island. I'm on West 10th, living with Vin, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm say 26, young, naive, stupid kid. World at your fingertips. I get get to Manhattan. The world's there. You get all these crazy rushes of ambition. And I remember talking to Vin about creating an app where you kind of knew where everyone was going that night, right? Because we got to the city and it was like hit or miss, which bar you go to it could be dead, it could be popping, right? And I was like, oh, how cool would it be if there was an app where you could just see who's at the bar already? And he was like, oh, that'd be sick. Like, I wonder what it's like to make an app. And that's the first, first recollection I had of the idea, right? So then a year went by, we moved around the block to Grove Street in the West Village, and we became friends with this guy, and he was big into tech, right? And he was a little older, experienced, and I was uh, like 27 at the time, 28, and I was like, hey, you know, we're on these dating apps, we're single in the city, we should come up with our own dating app, and it should be something like, we called it, I said, this, this rounds on me, right? Okay. So it wasn't first rounds on me, it was this rounds on me. And the concept was that you could send somebody a drink from anywhere in the world. We'd have to like be tied to a bar, right? So it'd be like, say you were at Davidson, I was in New York, and it was your birthday, I couldn't come down. I would pay for a drink at the bar and you'd be all taken care of, right? Mm -hmm. So that was like the first idea that came to mind. And you know, you know me, right? If I if I have an idea, it's not just an idea, it's not just like shooting the shit. It's like I'm gonna kind of pursue it, you know? And and I told this guy, like, hey, I want to actually make this app. And he, he at the time said, yeah, let's do it. Like, let's, let's go all in. And this was just, he's just a friend? He or? was a friend. Like, he okay. was probably a, a good friend, right? We, we'd been friends for, say, a year, met in the city, lived in the same apartment building. Super nice guy. Um, but, yeah, I guess he didn't know the full extent of, like, how I was. And I probably didn't even know the full extent of how I was. So I was like, all right, we're going to do this, right? So I went home that night, and I wrote it all out on paper. And I gave it to him. And I was like, yo, let's have a meeting and let's figure out what the steps are. And I was like pulling teeth to like get it going. And eventually we 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 wrote the the idea down on paper and it was way different than it is now. But I got really excited, right? I was like, oh shit, this this could be something. So then I remember like a few weeks had gone by and I reached out to him and I said, hey, we need to pay a lawyer to get like a legal name and to get an LLC. And his response was, I'm not going to pay any money until I know the idea is going to work. Hmm. So immediately I was like, okay, I'm not going to be able to work with this guy. But we were also friends, right? Right. And I, I, I felt really stressed because our friendship was obviously important. And I was like, you know what? But the idea is more important to me. Not that I, I would choose it over our friendship, but I'm going to pursue this. And if he doesn't want to be part of it, he doesn't want to be part of it. Right. So... Right before the pandemic happened, so I would say six months went by and it was dormant, right? And and every single night I would think about this idea, right? Did he ever ask you about it during those six months? No, because he he didn't take it serious, right? right. He was like, if you're going to do this as a hobby, I'll do it. And if it's to strike a lightning, that's great. Right. Whereas I was the opposite where I was like, we're going to put all of our effort into this and make it something, but it's going to take all of our effort. So six, six months went by stressed and you're working full-time jobs you what were you doing at that time was it i was working tech in tech for ntt okay right so it's it's not stressful it means tech sales is pretty pretty great job laid back work from home but i was stressed because you know when you have that mindset of something bigger's out there you you really have a drive for something it was holding me down like not being able to pursue this so the pandemic happened and i don't know I feel like during the pandemic, people had two ways they went about it, right? Some use it as an excuse to stay on the couch and be lazy and be like, hey, the whole world shut down. So this is a great excuse to just not do anything. And then I feel like 
other people said, oh shit, this is like a time when the world's going to stop where you could actually figure out what you are passionate about and like change yourself. Right. So I guess the, the whole mindset that I've always had was, okay, I'm going to be optimistic and use this to my advantage. Right. So I moved out of the city. When you live in the city, you spend a lot of money mm. eating out, going out. Right. So pandemic, I moved back home with my parents and I'm like, wow, shit, I'm saving a lot of money. You know, it was crazy. Because so you just got out of your lease or just you had um, to pay rent, but you weren't doing I think the I other was, things. We were still in the lease, but you weren't doing all the other stuff. That wasn't doing all the other stuff. And I did, I did make a big sale in tech where say I got like 25,000 bucks. Right. And for me, say I was in the city, I'd be like, oh, how could I, you know, have a good time with this 25,000 bucks? I was like, shit, this is a sign that I can't spend the money. I have it and I'm not a good saver anyway. So it was like, you know. So Thank God professional sports were not going on at that time. <laughs> that would have burned a hole it. in your pocket in two seconds. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna see how you actually start an app. So I had this friend, Mishka, right? Amazing guy. And he introduced me to his friend, Terika, who's a creative designer. And we had met right before the world shut down and kind of loosely talked about the app. So I reached back out to her. And I was like, hey, you know, how much money would it cost for you to take this idea I have on paper and make app frames, right? Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, it costs X amount of dollars and it take X amount of time, right? So this is March, 2020. So I was like, right away, I said, all right, let's do it. And I started to like map it out. I thought the world was gonna open up in like six months. So I was like, right. all right, let's get this done now. So she, she's like, you wanna do this now? Like you agreed to everything? And it was pretty expensive. I said, let's do it. So for the next two months, every single day, I'm doing like surveys. I'm doing like research. I'm coming up with a name, coming up with a logo. And I don't know. Do you remember the the old logo? Uh, yeah. With the, tr like a triangle, the triangle, with like yeah. a recycling sign. Yeah. And so we came up with all that. And, and as we know now, like my, my marketing's not the best. So I was doing this all by myself. So we get the frames done and then I hit another roadblock. Right. So now say, say two months goes by and I have my app idea on paper. Right. Mm hmm how do I get that as an actual demo into the app, right? Like a beta version of the app. Right. So we had another roadblock, right? So I'm reaching out to like my NTT people, you know, I'm Googling how much does it cost to make an app? Crazy prices, like $100,000, just nowhere near what I could afford. So I'll, I don't know if you remember, I don't know if I reached out to you first or Ryan first. Who Do you remember? Maybe both, because uh, he was here too. He was staying with me, so it was kind of like the same thing okay. probably. So I remember, Maybe him, but yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember I was talking to you and Ryan a little bit cause he was in America and you know, we just seeing what was going on and he was like, Oh, I think he casually said it. He said, I have a friend, Nick, who does stuff like that. I don't know if he can do this, but do you want me to introduce you to Nick? So I said, yeah, let's let me get on a call with him. So I remember we got on a call with Nick and I was like, you know, have you ever made an app? And he was like, not really, but I'm pretty good with coding and these, these languages. So if you want, I can, you know, give it a whirl. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was actually, I don't know if you remember, I was like, this could be a huge waste of money. Cause this guy's got no idea what he's doing essentially. Right. And I didn't know Nick. Right. I didn't know his work ethic at the time. So I was like, shit. Okay. You know what? Let's do it. So I signed a contract with Nick. We actually did like an equity agreement and he, Nick just put like, Fucking all his effort. Oh, he's the best. He put all his effort into Crushed this thing. It. Didn't like never made an app, as we said, right? And self-taught coder. Self-taught coder. Huge penis. <laughs> Huge penis. Yeah. So, say two months goes by, and he keeps sending me updates, and like him and I talked a lot about what I wanted from the app. And after say like two months, and I, I had moved to LA at this point while he started doing this coding stuff, right? So mm -hmm. now this is all going on while I came out to LA to see you and Ryan. And I remember the, the first time I came out here, I told you guys about the idea. And I mean, I'm sure that no one's, uh, I mean, whatever. You guys are just like, oh, that's cool. Like, who knows what you're working on? Sounds fun. And it was nothing serious. And then Nick made this prototype. And I was like, holy shit. Like, it, it's funny. It makes when, it real. Yeah, it's funny point. how, you know, in the moment, you if I showed you for the first time the prototype, you'd be like, oh, this is just a shitty app. But whatever. But if you, if you take a look four months, six months, a year prior to that, when I had the idea and now, oh shit, the idea is in the app. It's in the phone. Mm -hmm. The files are in the phone, right? 
So that that just kind of not self motivated me, but it, it just starts to show you when you when you do step by step and take it slow, but just keep going. You can't really be stopped. You know, it's just if you're just gonna keep going, you'll get there. Yeah. So we had the prototype, and I remember showing everybody, and they're like, "Oh, this is pretty cool." You know, well, what are you gonna do now? Because I can't market it. You can't just have an app with no users on it. And this was early days. This is probably, I think we we finished the prototype in August or September 2020. Mm-hmm. And I had come to you actually when it was still like a very shitty app. And I said, you know, like you know, podcast, social media, marketing. Do you want to be part of the app? And I remember you came back to me and said, you said yes. And then we started to do some stuff. But you we, you were in that shitty job, yeah. right? So you, I didn't even realize at the time how much of a life you didn't have. And a week later, you came back to me and said, oh, you know, actually, I can't do it. And I was like, all right, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so then, yeah, we were there was we were all over the place, but still just moving forward, right? Mm-hmm. And I remember, I remember that, I don't know, if I, I started to go to investors, right? And the first offer, I think I had four offers. The first offer was from that Russian guy, mm-hmm. I think. Sketchy, very sketchy. I was scared to go there. Yeah. Yeah. And it was great on one hand, like, holy shit, I'm, I'm actually meeting with people to like give me a big chunk of money to start a company. And the other hand, it was scary. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no much to ask for. I have no no idea how much money to ask for. I have no idea what I'm doing and uh, figuring it out on the fly. Yeah. We didn't sign the deal. And then the app got on the app store March 2021, which was crazy. Like yeah. Nick, who's never made an app, me, who's never started a company, got an app onto the app store. Which now it doesn't seem like a crazy feat because as you understand the app store more and, you know, it's not that difficult to get an app on the app store. But when you come from never doing anything at all, getting an app on the app store and seeing that icon there was so cool. Yeah. We had an event, I think, uh, Santa Monica, the Mm -hmm. beach party. We can't say the name of the place because... They've already tried to come after us. Legally. Not that place. The place uh, that oh, was on the beach. On the beach. Yes. On the beach was the first party. That's right. Where you were doing the interviews. That was the first ever Steve on the street. And we had a good setup. Steve on the beach. Yeah. Steve on the beach. Good yeah. setup. We had a good camera crew. We had a good setup. Um, and we had like 400 downloads that day. And, and we were telling everybody who's our demographic, you know, the concept of the app. And they all loved it, which fueled the fire more. Right. Mm-hmm. So from there, I was so hungry. And how do I raise money to get this going? Yeah. And I think one of the best things about people like us and who you surround yourself with is that you kind of put yourself in the best position to succeed, right? And you're not really afraid of someone rejecting you or you're not so cautious. You just put yourself out there, right? And we had our friend James worked in the lot. He has a gallery in the LaPierre Hotel. And I Shout out James, what up? And I remember, because I would go in to see James every day because during the pandemic, the hotel was kind of the only place where you can go and it was a little bit of freedom, right? Mm -hmm. And there's young people there staying there. And I would go every day, but this one day, I think we just came from the gym and I was walking home and I was about to not go in. I don't know if I was hungry or whatever, but I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to go in. And, And I swear to you, I thought, well, you never know what could happen if you go in. And I, I promise you, you think it's a lie. I thought that as I was, crossing la pierre so let me go in so i go in and i see a woman outside with a neft bottle like giving out drinks and me just being the person i am is at all like you know what are you doing this and that should i work with i work with this vodka company and i thought okay why don't we partner with the vodka company and do another like beach party where we can get more downloads so it helps build my case to get an investor even more right because at this point we had a deck we had an app and we had a little bit of a user base and it was just like, okay, I cannot do this on my own anymore. It's how do we get the investor? Mm-hmm. So I was doing everything I can to just inch it forward. And her response to me was, I don't know. We partnered with, a di- we, we did a, an event with the dating app before and it's not really our style. Um, so I don't know, but let me see what your app looks like. And it was on the, on the phone, right? And it was the shitty version. And I showed her how it worked. And she was like, whoa, this is 
this is pretty sick. This is very different than the apps that I see. And I said, yeah, you know, I use dating apps and um, I wanted to create a concept where you, you took a dating app and made it more organic. You made it real. And this is what I came up with. So she was just taken back. She said, well, do you need money for the app? Right. I didn't mention it. And I was like, oh, yeah, actually, I do. Why do you ask? And she said, I want to introduce you to someone who works at NAPT, who was Roe at the time. Mm-hmm. And I Ro, think... Roe at the time? He's changed his name since? Roe at the time was his name. Okay. <laughs> now it's a Roe at the time. Okay. Um, so so where was I? So... Introduce you to Roe. Introduce me to Roe. So now Roe was doing a NAPT... And she said, you know, the person who runs NAPT is looking to invest in more things, right? Mm-hmm. And I was actually naive still in 2LA, so... I, Now, a lot of people lie about that, but this one happened to be real. So I go to meet Ro. He loves me. I mean, you know, Ro's Ro's a great guy. And he's like, I want to set up a meeting with Jeff. We love this idea. We want to potentially invest in your idea. So I was like, all right, this is, this is fucking wild. Right. So this was, this was like June of 21, Mm -hmm. right? June of 21. Do you remember all this? Yeah. Okay. So they set a date for the meeting, mm-hmm. right? I go in. I'm all ready. Uh, we we pitch them the pitch deck, the app, the plan, the forecast. And Jeff's like, okay, I love it. Like on the spot, he's talking about the deal we're going to make, right? So I'm getting a little nervous because I don't know what I'm doing still. And when you go through this process, you have all these people in your ear, right? And... I started to try and make circles with people who have started apps or companies and been like, what's a good deal? What's not a good deal, right? So a lot of people told me you should never take that deal. You know, this is what you should ask for, right? And what they were telling me was something something crazy, right? Where mm-hmm. it's like, don't give up any of your company and ask for like $10 million. And it's like, okay, it's, to me, it seems very unrealistic. right? And it's also like, you don't know the path that I took and I don't know the path that you took, right? So someone giving me this advice could come from a very wealthy background Mm -hmm. who has all these offers all over the place and is actually being so picky. Like, no, I'm going to give up 10% of my company for $10 million and that's it. And if you don't like it, I'll just find somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I was listening to him a little bit, right? Like, shit, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm being scammed here by this guy and he's going to take my whole company. And then I thought, but who am I, right? I come from nothing. I'm a risk. I don't have any experience. You know, taking, having, having a big chunk of something is better than having every chunk of nothing, right? So I was stressed and the peer pressure got to me mm-hmm. and I, I called Jeff and I said, no, I can't take this deal. You know, no, I wasn't aggressive. But I was kind of in my head like, oh, you're trying to take advantage of me, mm-hmm. you know? Defense, like, oh, yeah, like a little like defensive. A little and- defensive. And he simply wrote back, hey, that's fine. Like, wish you luck. You know, nice. And I thought he'd come back with like a counter yeah. and we'd meet in the middle. And my stubbornness and my pride was like, oh, you know, fuck it. Like, I'm just going to go get money somewhere else, which is a good mindset to have, but it's also not. Right. So. Then we start from square one again, right? So now it's say, I don't know if it was August or whatever. I don't have any money for the app, right? I'm still in my day job and I'm miserable because I see that we're right on the cusp of something big. And I don't know what happened. A few weeks went by and I was just, and we, we had a few more meetings for people who wanted to invest in the app and they were just worse deals and it didn't feel right. And I was like, where am I going? I'm going farther away from where I was, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, who do I trust? Who, who, who's going to give me some good advice that will help me figure out what's going on? So I, I call my dad. I'm like, listen, and my dad doesn't know. My dad doesn't, like, doesn't know equity and you know all that stuff. So I was like, all right, here's the situation. We have this offer. I turn it down. These are the other offers. What do you think I should do? And one thing my dad has is like, he always my best interest at mind, right? Mm-hmm. But he also is very street smart. And kind of just lays it out there for you, right? Because he obviously wants the best for me. So he's like, okay, I, we break down the percentages. 
And he's like, listen, I think you should take the deal. You still have a huge chunk of something that's going to be actually something, right? Because as we know, this deal that I was getting had a huge infrastructure behind it, had a big support team. It had smarter people than me. It was, there was a vision there, right? And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like all these other people, you know, they're giving me this advice. They don't know who I am. They don't know my background. They don't know what I could do, right? Let me go with my gut and just do this, right? So, I, but I didn't know if the deal was on the table, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you turn somebody down with a business deal, that's probably it. Like, you're like, fuck it, you're out. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I got to go to Roe first, right? So I, I call Roe and I'm like, listen, I think I fucked up. And he's like, all right, talk to me. So right off the bat, I knew like, okay, this is kind of a right decision because for Roe to even have that approach, of welcoming me, welcoming me back into the conversation, I was like, these guys actually believe in me and like believe in what we're doing here. So I told him the situation. He's like, listen, Jeff really likes you. He really likes the idea. Let's have another meeting, right? I think the offer still stands. Let's have another meeting and, and see what goes on. Mm-hmm. Go back in for another meeting. And I, I think you have to like swallow your pride but I think it's natural, right? If, you, if, you, if you're not like that and you could explain to somebody where you're coming from, it's pretty easy, right? So I went into Jeff and I said, I gave him the whole spiel, right? Of what I told you about people being in my ear, doing what's right, being so new to this. And he was like, listen, I get it, man. Like you're 30 years old. This is big decisions and you don't know what to do, but this is the, the, the deal stands if you want it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, let's do it. Let's do it. And... A few of the things I was nervous about in the deal were like, am I going to lose control of my company? Are they going to like kick me out and just take everything over and like tell me what to do when I think I know what's best for this vision? Mm -hmm. And the position that we're in now, making that decision was the best decision. Like nobody tells us what to do. They trust us. They check in, Mm -hmm. but I actually give them more because I want them to see like, hey, like, you know, you guys made the best decision investing in us because we're going to go 110%. We're going to do everything that we can to make this work. And if it doesn't, it's not, it's it's not that we didn't try, Mm -hmm. you know, we're going to learn every day. We're going to work our asses off every day. We're going to just do everything possible to better ourselves and the app. And I think personally, we're going to just crush it. And yeah, now I, so that was, that's the long story of it. But, uh, and now here we are, right? So now we're approaching 10,000 users. We just did the subscription model. We're generating revenue. We have our merch coming up. We, this is our, what, 14th podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a team of what, 10 people around us and we launched the app four months ago. So it's fucking only two cities and only two cities. Yeah. So it's just like, just been the coolest journey. And we always talk about, we, sometimes we get, or I would say I get a little disrupted in looking long term and be like, oh, we need to be here or we need to be here and stressing about where we're going to be instead of just living in the now. And I think you do a, a phenomenal job of being like, listen, we got to enjoy this now because say we get to where we want to get, right? We always talk about Prez, right? We get to where we want to get and we are just generating millions of dollars of revenue. We're so busy that we would we would say to each other, oh, remember how it was back in the past when we were like, so day to day green ingrained in the app and just doing stuff like this. So it's, it's been amazing, but I think enjoying this journey has just been fucking sick. Yeah. And honest. I think, I think being like the leader and the visionary, you have to, you have to look into the future, right? You have to kind of see the long term plan, but I mean, you're also in the trenches every single day doing all the little things. So I think you have to have both of those things, right? like a balance between vision and staying focused on the task at hand. Yeah. And it's, it's, I would say it's the toughest thing, right? So I would say, uh, you talk about like sports and companies and presidents, like the best ones are the ones who can manage people, right? Because you're never going to be the smartest because there's so many different areas of business and different areas of teams that if you think you have all the answers, you're just going to fail miserably. Your job is to just, not even be a leader because I don't like the word leader, but be like a unifier, right? Like make sure everybody's firing on all cylinders, make sure everyone's united, cohesive. But at the same time, you do have to be a little aggressive and do have to do things that aren't the most comfortable, you know? And I think 
case in point is you and I, right? So before the app, well, we would never even say anything negative about each other or even have a tiff with each other. And when you work with people, it's amazing because it's like a level of trust and a level of openness where I can say something to you and maybe I don't mean it in the moment and we could get by, get past it easily, right? Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult because, you know, I don't want to get too much into what happened with us, but, you know, you and I are in this app the most, right? So, like, obviously, the app's my whole life because I'm full-time, you know, it's my baby. It's your baby. And then I just try to surround myself with people who trust me. And I, when I say trust me, I mean in the sense of I can't pay you a salary, right? Mm -hmm. But I could pay you a little bit hoping that you'll believe in the long run this is all going to be worth it mm -hmm. and that you just believe in the company and me, right? So I try and surround myself with people like you, right? So you and I, you believe in it most, which is so amazing, right? And you probably work on it and care about it second to me. And I could confidently say that. And, you know, when you, when two people care about something so much and something happens, you know, I came at you like, dude, what, what's going on here? Cause you were doing something in one of your sectors. Right. And I was like, what the hell is going on? I don't like this. And you're like, Oh, all right. Like you didn't tell me that or whatever. And it was a really poor job of me not taking a step back. Like emotion came in. Right. So it's like, when you're the unifier or the head of the company, you have to like take a step back, let mm -hmm. emotion die down and then be like, okay, what's the best way to tackle this? But that doesn't happen all the time. So yeah, I came at you and I was like, dude, what the fuck is this? This and that. And you were like, tough. like, and I've never seen you. You were like, dude, fuck you. Like, are you kidding me? And I was like, oh shit. So then we talked, I talked to somebody else and they're like, oh no, you got it all wrong, Joe. And I was like, shit. So yeah, I had to look in the mirror and be like, Okay, first, I need to apologize to Steve. Second, I need to unify us, you know, to get back on the same page. And it takes me to do that, but you to be like, yeah, dude, like, I get it. Like, it's fine. It's business, but let's fucking just keep crushing it. Just relax. We're all on the same page. And having those people around just makes everything so much better. <clears throat> yeah, and like you're saying, like, there's just constant pressures and and not only pressure, but there's just like a million things to do every single day. Oh, right? yeah. Because, because it's such a small team, because if you have nine other people working with you, all nine of us have full-time jobs that we have to right. do shit for. So, um, so yeah, so I, I mean, it's easy to see how the stress builds up and how, you know, it could cause you to not make a, you know, a calm, like logical choice. <laughs> Emotions come in all the time. You're tired, you're hungry, you got a million things going on. So, yeah, that stuff happens. And I think that's why... Like you said, if you surround yourself with people that are uh, have the right mindset in terms of like, there's not going to be like, there might be a combative thing for like two seconds, but then it's like, no, that was just emotional. So we can just figure yep. out what we need to do to move on and, and not only move on, but make it better and grow from it and not have that happen again or have a lesser version of that happen the next time. And that's exactly what you're doing. And Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's weird to say, but I think when you fully become close to somebody you go through an actual fight mm -hmm. and in the moment the fight i don't want to call it a fight the issue was annoying and it was like oh, i wish that didn't happen but in the long run it's like now we have a dialogue and an understanding that makes it so much more clear right yeah and it's funny because i would i think it was last night i was looking at our instagram because like you said right you guys all have day jobs so you're not just staring at app stuff all day like me and I was looking at the Instagram and I saw that our posts went from one day ago to five days ago. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the fuck? Why? And, and the, the, the last post was one day ago. And I was like, why was there a fucking four day gap there? Right. And immediately I was like, just calm down, just relax. And then I was, I was, I was peeing actually. And I was like, oh, that's right. We had the issue with the open to it podcast because of the thing. Okay. And I just like immediately forgot about it. And I was like, good thing. I didn't just go like, dude, why? Or not dude, but like you, Joey and Kat, like, hey, what the hell is going on? I was like, oh, that's right. Okay. Good thing I thought about it for a second because it's an actual great explanation for why. Right. We didn't and yeah, but we days. still, I think we still posted. Um, I think we're still on pace. No, we, yeah. We I don't know. Maybe it wasn't four days. News but it, post. It yeah. was just 
a little gap because I think it was the open to it right. thing. Yeah. And I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. Let's chill. And again, even the open to it thing, learning lessons about just like, I mean, that's what it is. It keeps learning lessons, making, you know, less mistakes as you go and just getting better. And I think that's exactly what we're doing. Right. So if you look at like, you know, the, where we were in July and August compared to where we are now, it's just continued progress and it's been, it's been great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I would even say like, we continue to have discussions on the vision, the voice of the app, the mm-hmm. vibe of the app. Right. And I remember when we first started, we were all over the place with what we were going to do with Instagram, right? We were, are we, we going to be crazy? We're we going to be funny. Are we going to be sappy? And we, I think we actually didn't even agree on what we were going to be. And slowly over time, we kind of, we're, we're kind of really finding with the lane that we want to be on. And it's not even like an, a discussion. It's just, yeah, it just feels right. Right. It, I think it's a natural progression of like how, you know, at, we're kind of just like uh, morphing with or the the social media is kind of and the message is kind of morphing with like the experiences and the people we meet and just like seeing what people respond to and you know not just trying to do stuff for like shock value but really try to stay true to like what we kind of envision the the brand to be right and i think we're doing a much better job of that and it's kind of the thing you just trial by fire right you learn as you do it and you evolve as you do it as opposed to like having this like perfect map that is never actually going to come true that you might end up changing a lot anyway so i think we're kind of in a great spot in terms of like continuing to just navigate as we go yeah and i think what we always talk about is we just really want to be genuine and real right and every person that we meet or is on the podcast or that we work with innately says that about us right like oh you you guys are just good guys you know and and that's going into making this app is kind of what i wanted right just like a community of people that are okay and comfortable and just being genuine and good and just going out and seeing if they connect and building that inside the team and that's the vibe the app is kind of taken and obviously we put like a fun twist on it which is amazing but we're, we just want to be righteous genuine guys and i feel like that's how companies succeed is when you, you're just true to your values right like everyone that follows us knows what they're getting you know we're not really trying to get followers for viral things or stupid things it's like we're getting real followers and every single solitary real follower was great instead of just getting 10 20 50 you know, instant follows that'll just fall off the next day. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think like, you know, just in terms of growing pains and being genuine, all these things we're just talking about, like the open to it podcast incident is something that I learned from. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to blow up anyone else's spot or make anyone else feel bad at the expense, like at their expense for us just to get, you know, more views or more engagement. Like I don't want to, that's not me. And I made, you know, lapse of judgment. And, but I feel like that's kind of what we say about the app in general is like, we want it to be positive. We want to build a community and we want to be able to like believe in it and be able to sleep at night because we know we're doing the right thing and doing what we want to do as opposed to like, you know, maybe some more short term success, but, you know, sacrificing like relationships with people or our, you know, um, like our morals essentially really is what, you know, what it comes down to. So I think we're learning and, yeah. you know, I mean, even the same thing, if we didn't have our little thing, then, you know, something else bigger could happen down the road. So exactly. it's good to like make these mistakes early as long as we're learning from them, right? Like mistakes yeah, we're always are going to make happen. mistakes. Yeah. And just how do you, how do you learn and make sure you use the mistakes to your advantage, right? Not fall back from the mistake. Exactly. But I wanted to ask you because you've kind of, kind of helped me in a sense, figure out who I want it to be, right? Obviously, I'm CEO and the founder of an app. And, you know, you need a voice. You need you need a message, right? Mm-hmm. And we always talked about, okay, like, who do you want to be? Do you want to be like a Mark Cuban? Do you want to be like a Jay Shetty? Like, you know, what's, what's, you, what's your persona? You know, and I think you're kind of pushing me in that direction of being that, like, I like to say I'd love to be like a Jay Shetty type, right? Like, help other people. Be a voice of reason, but nice eyes. <laughs> he does have amazing eyes. Yeah, but like, wh- who's your person? Because you're. It's funny you follow all these funny, energetic guys, and that's who you are. But you're also the sweet, sensitive guy. You know, so like, who who are your who who makes you tick? Yeah, and and I think it's good because I think you everyone has models, right? Or I don't. I'm not gonna call them heroes but like models, like Mm -hmm. people that you see and you want to kind of exactly what you're saying, like do live kind of how they live and, and, or at least outwardly, right. How you see how they live. Um, so for me, 
like I do love comedy, I love entertainment, but I never want to be like we like I just talked about. I never want to be like mean spirited or hurt people. Uh, so I think my my favorite dude actually probably is Theo Vaughn. Okay. Um, because I think he he's hilarious, right? Uh, he laughs at the expense of himself a lot, but he also like it, I listen to all his podcasts. He's one of the few people that will listen to pretty much every podcast, and he's like he just has such a connection with his audience because he's so authentic and real, and he isn't afraid to show his emotions and people can really relate to him. I mean, he is just like, you know, he's from Louisiana in a small town and kind of like, just kind of like you would think is a simple guy, but he's really this really complex, like deep guy that cares about people. And I think the, the way that he blends like comedy and being funny with like the, the care that he shows for other people, I think <clears throat> for me is like someone that I really look up to in terms of like being able to do both of those things. Right. So if there's a way with this where I'm able to, you know, be entertaining and funny, but also help people and show people like that we care about them. That's kind of, to me, the recipe that I'm into and trying to follow. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, yeah I, so I don't know anything about the Ophon, but yeah, that's that was a great explanation. And and I think we see that day to day, right? We had an incident. We were doing Steve on the street at Runyon, mm. and you know, when we go into Steve on the street, our goal is to get funny content and I hope people download the app and you know just get cool videos so we we go to runyon this woman's coming down from her jog i guess pull her over hey you want to answer some questions about dating sure you asked i don't know what you asked her um a cuffing season maybe you yeah. know what are your plans and she just started to cry right and i could see that going many different ways depending on who was on the other side of that right so say we were assholes and we were like, you know, like, fuck you. Like, why are you crying? Like, well, we show it anyway. Cause she did answer a question before that. Yeah. She's, I think she started to answer the question about like what, I guess it was cuffing season or whatever. She started to answer yeah. the question and she, like was talking about why she was at Runyon. And she said, well, she's like, yeah, I'm here today because I just broke up with my boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. And then just started bawling. Well, out it's of funny nowhere. because I think we've gotten that response a few times, right? Like, oh, I just broke up. What? my partner and we're like, Oh, well, first round zombie is perfect for you. Yeah. And I don't know if, if we initially reacted that way, but she started crying and you know, she like walked away sobbing, you know, and you and I just looked at each other like, Oh shit. Like, like, are you okay? We asked her like, you know, are you okay? And she composed herself and said, you know, it's really tough for me. I broke up with this guy for, we were together for four years and it sucks. I'm like, this today's the first day and I'm really hurt can you please do me a favor and just not showing this content? And we were like, of course we're not going to show any this content. We're like, are you okay? So yeah, I'm fine. Um, but you know, she said good luck and we let her go. And obviously we didn't show the content because we're righteous people. She, this was what, three months ago, mm -hmm. two months ago, something like that. She texts us. She emailed me, I would say a week ago and said, Hey Joe, it's so-and-so from running. I don't know if you remember, but you guys treated me so well and my company is looking for a dating app partner and I immediately thought of you, would you be interested? And I was like, oh my God, of course. And this is like a big opportunity, but that would have never came about if we weren't genuine righteous people. And I think our whole messaging just follows suit with that. Yeah, that was a crazy experience and, and just the way it's come full circle. Um, and that's what I, th I, I don't know, I always think about this too, like, one of the things we preach about the app, right, is just, or just in general, is getting out there and actually meeting people and doing things as opposed to, I'm going to use the other apps as an example, but just sitting home and messaging and living through your yeah. phone. And I think like, you know, like the way to like really feel alive and feel like, like you're actually living is like going out and doing things, right? Obviously. But when you go and meet people and mingle and feel like emotions, like that's when you're really doing stuff. And I think this story is like a kind of a cool lesson. And that's why I love to just get out and talk to people. Cause it's like, everyone's got their own story. And I just, even if it's only a two minute conversation, it's like, it's someone we met and we had a really good time with like fun vibes and just like hear their story, get some feedback, learn a little bit and hopefully like make their day a little bit better. That's awesome. And that's like, that's like what I love about the app is like, it really promotes you going out and doing stuff. And I, we have a couple, probably a couple stories like that where we're just meeting people yeah. and just like leaving them, you know, better than we found them. And hopefully, hopefully we do that and just have a nice little time for, for the two minutes we talk to them. Yeah. And I would say our goal is to just make everybody feel better and look, look, look like them best selves, like their best selves, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, we never want to make someone look bad. We never want to use 
use something to our advantage that is negative towards them. Um, but yeah, so the, yeah, the way the app works to that point, right? I would say every person I've ever connected with, whether it's through work or friendship or relationship or someone I wanted to help was actually someone I met. Mm. Even if I went on a date with them and we didn't have a connection, there was still some level of connection or friendship or like a network, right? Where maybe they asked me for a favor or I asked them for a favor and it was just nice. And I think that's one thing that I like about the app because people get intimidated maybe about like falling in love, right? Mm. Like you think, oh, you're going to go for a drink at a bar and either you want to fall in love and you're not, or you're hoping to fall in love or you do fall in love and it's like stressful. But it's, I think the opposite where, like we said, if you just get out and have a drink with somebody with no expectation, right? You could become friends. You could, you can go out and mm -hmm. fall in love. You can network, right? Maybe you go get a drink with someone who's in the same industry as you. And you're like, hey, like, actually, you know, not really looking for anything, but, you know, I'd love to just connect on this or work on this together. And you just never really know what could happen, you know? Yeah. And I think you always learn about yourself when you meet someone new and get a new perspective. And especially like romantically, like you can, you can really learn about yourself and learn, you know, maybe what you want to work on or what you need to do better. Just there's so many things that you will learn just by going out and doing something as opposed to just sitting home. And even if you're reading a lot about stuff, like, yeah, it, you need to figure out how it's going to click for you and how to actually use what you're learning and getting out of the house and trying new things is I think one of the best ways to do it. Yeah. I think anything you could do to put yourself in a position to learn something or grow or connect with somebody is hugely beneficial to being alive. Like what's the point of being alive? Yeah. If you're just going to sit at home and be on a different app, being on a different app, if you're using it the right way is fine. Sure. But if you're going to be on one of these apps where you are just swiping for validation, like what's the point? Like what's the point of being alive? Right. Um, so like going to the Kimpton that day, right. If I wasn't out walking around and thinking what could happen if I go into this hotel that's what I want people to do in life and with the app is what could happen if I go get this drink, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you connect with somebody on the app, you're somewhat attracted to them. You're somewhat interested in them. So why not just go that next step and see what could happen? Because you you never know. As you know, my story with Hannah, that's exactly what happened, you know? But you, you mentioned something, and we never talked about this. You actually went through a really tough time months ago with someone, right? Mm -hmm. And... You were, you were upset, right? I've never seen you so vulnerable and, and so upset. But now, I don't know if you like fully learned from him, you just firmly learned from it or fully like shook it, but it seems you did learn a lot from the experience and you just mentioned, you know, you go through these things to grow and learn. What did you take away from that? Did you learn? And cause you do seem so much better. Yeah. Um, man, I, it was interesting, and, and there's a couple things I learned, definitely a couple things I learned along the way, but I, for me personally, like I hadn't been in a, I, we weren't in a relationship, but I hadn't dated anybody, like, seriously, mm -hmm. and we didn't even date seriously, but, like, I think for three months, we basically dated, right? And I hadn't had that in, like, 10 years, yeah. right? I just never got to that level. So it was the first time I met somebody that I wanted to explore this and see what happened. So when it ended, I was, you know, it ended on her terms and um, very abruptly, and you know, it was, it was very hurtful because I at least wanted to see it through and I never really got like a good explanation as to what happened. But, um, you know, I tried, I tried to get her back. And I think the, but the biggest thing I learned, which is like outside of that is I, I think my like ego took over and I had to like prove that I could get her back. And yeah. that's kind of why I hung on to it for so long. And it was kind of scary because like, I wasn't totally aware of that in the moment as mm -hmm. I was going through it. But after like the dust settled and I looked back on it, I was like, shit, like, I'm kind of glad that we didn't get back together because then I might have been like, "All right, I got her back. That's it." And and I don't know because who knows? But like, but that is a scary thing that happened when I look back on it. But in terms of like learning about myself and learning about like relationships, it was invaluable to to it'll make me that much better for any future relationships and just like knowing what to expect and knowing how to handle everything and knowing you know my own shortcomings and that in that experience of what I didn't do probably the best yeah. and what I could do better. Um, but yeah, like, like, and it really opened my eyes to like even start dating more because like, you know, I hook up and I hang out with people, but I don't really date and meet a lot of new people. Like I don't go out of my way. It just kind of happens. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, yeah, I'll go hang out with this person and see what happens. Cause like I said, you, I'm going to learn something, right. I'm going to learn about them. I'm going to learn about myself. 
you're going to meet someone new and hopefully like the same thing, just have a nice, you know, positive interaction yeah. and vibe a little bit and see what happens. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's why I do encourage, like, I mean, I, I like, I'm always going out, right. I'm always doing stuff, but like that type of thing where to have like a deeper connection, is yeah. re- that's where you really learn. I think, and you really, I was out of my comfort zone a little bit. It was something I wasn't used to. So I think that's what, uh, where a lot of the growth came from. Yeah. And I mean, we never talked about it, but I, I, we, we talk about dating with a lot of different people and I was thinking about it the other day. I don't know who said what, but I was like, Oh shit. I remember like Steve went through that, but I never brought it up because you did seem to grow from it so much that it yeah, never it came was, up, you know, it was one of those things that like, once I just like accepted it and made the choice, like, all right, I got to move on. Then that's when I kind of just flipped the switch. And I, I don't want to say I was instantly better, but like I moved on quickly and then I was like back out there. And I also, I got, it's tough too, because I think one of the things I realized, it's like, I think I'm happier by myself, like not by myself, but like having freedom and not to like hook up with people, just having yeah. freedom to like, because I feel like a lot of times when you, you know, when people get into relationships, I think a lot of the rest of their ambitions kind of like go to the side. Yep. So and I'm not saying that was happening then, but uh, for me to uh, get into a relationship with somebody, I need someone that will totally support like me continuing to grow in my own way and not just like settling for, you know, a, like, I don't know how to put this the best because I don't really thought about the wording of it, but like, I don't think settling is the right word, but like settle and like give up on other stuff. Like I want someone that supports me and I can support in their own endeavors and like we come together, but um, I still have a lot I want to do like career wise. Like I feel like I'm not even started yet in a lot of ways. So that's important to me and finding someone is like we can grow together and, and kind of have our own lives and yep. our own goals, our own ambitions and then go from there. Yeah. I think that's, that's what, that's what people should hope to find. Right. Like obviously important for me is like, if Hannah was to halt this app, I probably wouldn't even go down the road with her. Cause I'd be like, not that the app's more important, but if you're the type of person that's going to halt my dream, then that's not who I want to be surrounded with, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think too, like you need like a mission in life. Right. And you know, for some people, maybe that is being a husband and a father or a mother and you know, a wife and all that stuff. But like, I feel like you need something outside of that to kind of have your own mission in your own life. And it doesn't yeah. mean like you have to work like a maniac. I'm just saying like, you should have something else uh, and not try to f- get all your fulfillment and all your happiness from a relationship. Right. And I think that's where people can fall into a trap. Um, so yeah, I think that's very important. Uh, you know, again, I could be look back in two years and be like, you're an idiot, which I'm sure I will anyway. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. That's at least what I've learned in the past couple of years and especially the past year. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. So what do you think your mission is? Cause it's, I only asked because I was listening to the Jay Shetty and Trevor Noah, uh, on purpose today. Mm-hmm. And they got really deep. And one of the questions, you know, was like, what, what what do you think your purpose is? Right. Because I think a lot of people that come to L.A. or go to New York think differently. Right. Obviously, pretty much everybody comes from a smaller town. And then the people who gravitate to the city have a bigger dream. Right. Mm-hmm. I think you have that bigger dream because something inside of you says there's more and there's more that I could do. And there's some type of mission out there for me that I at least want to try and pursue. So I thought it was a great question. So, like, what do you think? What do you think Steve was put on Earth? to do if you could do anything um so one thing i come back to is uh at farrell graduation Mm -hmm. i was given the award for um i think it was the dennis barrett the old football coach dennis barrett award for like spirit and it's basically bringing out the best in others and i think for a large chunk of my life i did that and i would say it kind of died out in the past few years in a lot of ways and maybe it's starting to come back but like i think you know a we talked about the job i had which you know, for me, it was a definition of a soul sucking job and I didn't have any time for anything else. And I was stressed and pretty miserable all the time. So that is also good though, because keeping perspective in a lot of ways, because, you know, I do some training on the side and, and I have to put myself, because me, like I make the gym my priority. I don't have kids. I have, you know, I have a little bit of a demanding schedule, but I always prioritize like health in the gym. Yep. So when I work with other people, I could be like, oh shit, maybe they have that soul sucking job where they work for 12 hours a day and don't have time. So how do I relate to them? Uh, kind of a tangent, but basically um, getting out of that like darker phase of my life, 
I think like getting back to that is like bringing out the best in others, um, trying to, you know, make people's lives better, whether they're in my life every day or for two seconds on the street. Yeah. Um, and I think the app is a great vehicle for me to do that. Right. In terms of like, if I do it well, I'll put, you know, the app in the best place for my position, the best place to succeed, right. And have the team succeed and have everything grow. Cause I think like, that's a battle with me, especially we, we've been talking about it the past couple of days, but in terms of content, right. Like shifting from like the frat humor and like the raunchy, like, which is, could be funny, has its place. But like, I think like the vision we have for the app and the message coming from more of like, like I talked about that the Ovan place where it's like, he's hilarious, but it's never at the expense of others. And it's also, you know, he always comes back to that like core value of like, he tells people to be good, to be good to yourself. Right. Yeah. And I think like, cause I don't know if we were talking about this, but I was talking about it with a few people recently where it's like, you know, people say it all the time, but it's like, if I talk to other people, the way I talk to myself, they would be like, dude, fuck you. And it's like, I, but I talk to myself like that a lot, you know, negative talk and like feeling like I'm not like living up to my potential and being lazy and all this shit. So like trying to get in a better headspace that way. But Theo does that, you know, and Theo battles with the two, but one of his biggest message, like, you know, be good to yourself. And, and I think that's something I'm trying to get better at. Um, so I know I'm going on a lot of tangents here, but like, no, it's, it's, it's great. <laughs> yeah. But, um, through, you know, for, in terms of like a vision, I think, you know, working, continuing to, to figure out how to like make the content successful and entertaining and funny when it needs to be funny and, you know, emotional when it's emotional, but like figuring out the way to do that and not just be like, all right, how many views did this get or what kind of, you know, obviously we want engagement and stuff, but it's like, what's the message? And if we can, you know, always come back to that as the kind of the North star, then I think that's the best way to succeed in the long run. And I think it ties into my, you know, maybe more of my like mission and my own North star is like doing that. It's like making people feel better, um, helping people when possible. And again, I'm no saint, like I'm still doing, you know, uh frivolous sex sometimes but always making sure that <laughs> literally the woman is enjoying herself and we have a, we have a real connection um <laughs> so i'm not like some altar boy or anything like that but like i do get the most like you know high and joy out of life when i'm making having a positive impact on people and making their day better and you know just having fun in the moment with them so i think with the app and through the app i can do that and yeah. and put the app in the best position to you know succeed as kind of a win-win yeah, and I think uh, doing doing what righteous stuff like we're talking about, you don't need to be an altar boy, right? Because there's such a broad spectrum of people that do it. Right? You can go from like The Rock to like Mark Wahlberg to Jay Shetty. They're all very different. Like The Rock mm-hmm. was a wrestler. He's, you know, workout warrior, but he's inspiring, motivating, tries to uplift people. Mark Wahlberg, uh, you know, actually Kevin Hart, I've been listening to a lot of Kevin Hart lately. He's so uplifting and motivating and it doesn't really matter what your, what your messaging is as long as it's the, the, the root cause of it and the foundation of it is to just help people. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's, yeah, I think it doesn't matter where yeah. you're coming from. Well, what about you with the same question? Like, I mean, obviously we um, know what the goal of the app is in a sense, but you know, do you, um, how does it tie into like your personal quest of, what you want out of life and what you want to give to people and give to life. Yeah. So I would always say this, right. There would be like, quote, when I was on other apps, it was like the quote, right? Like, mm-hmm. I think it was like, what would you want to be remembered for? Right. Or what's your goal in life? And I would always say that I want to make so much money that I can personally directly impact the world. Right. So it's like, I don't want to, just make say a couple hundred thousand dollars a year where I donate to a charity, right? Or something like that, where you don't really know what happens. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to like make money, but do good with it and like start my own foundation where I was like hands on and I put it into causes that I believed in, right? Like kids with cancer, right? How can I help them? Uh, starving children in Africa, right? Like how can I being given this, whatever you want to call it, right? This, this avatar help people who didn't have this avatar and it's, it's just something that really is, really sticks with me and really important to me, right? Like, if I could just live my whole life, just even thinking that way and having that mindset of I just want to help these people mm-hmm. and just lift other people up, you, like people that are the bottom of the barrel to society, right? 
it just really fires me up. It just excites me. It makes me really want to live and be good, you know? So sure. I don't know if that was the right answer, but yeah, I don't know if there's no right answer, that's, but that's, yeah, that's what yeah, I want to live for. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. No, that makes, that makes perfect sense. And I think, you know, the app is a great, um, I don't want to call it a stepping stone because that sounds so temporary, but like for, for those grand visions that you just said, like obviously the app is a, is an important step in terms of like getting to that level to be able to do stuff like that. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I always think like, you know, it's definitely cheesy and, and stupid, but like, you know, if everyone treats like, you know, if you, if you treat someone well and then go and treat five people well and they go and treat five, like, obviously it's like a fantasy world in a sense, but like, you know, if we can, we can always be doing more, but as long as we're doing like a little bit, of, you know, a little bit to positively impact people. And then I think we're doing something right. At least, you know, you can always do more, but yeah, do something. So, yeah. And I think I get into this, I guess, debate with people a lot, right? Like being positive versus negative. Right. And then there's like people who are like, Oh, I'm a realist, but you could be a realist and still be positive and negative, you know, and there's obviously the story, which is the real part of it. And then, you could take the story and build a negative out of it or take it and build a positive out of it. And it could be anything, right? You could yeah. have the worst situation factually real in front of you and not say, oh, let's just make it optimistic. It's like, well, let's pull some positive out of this and either just uplift each other or just make it where everyone feels okay, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. All right. So like we said, December 7th, 2022, I don't yeah. know why I said, 2022 at the beginning of that's like something a first grader would say when they're reading the date uh december 7th 2022 we're gonna look back at this podcast in 10 years and be like you, you fucking idiots but um <laughs> but for real um you know what are we doing in the next short 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 term vision for the app um what would you want to see happen by let's say may so may. about six months from now uh what do you want to see happen in the next six months what yeah, would be so successful what would be ideal yeah, so I would say the first four months is a lot of learning, right? Figuring out what works, what doesn't work, and we see it happen every day. Like, mm -hmm. we're never doing that again. That works. Let's do a lot of that. I would say in the next couple of months is to really solidify that more. Mm -hmm. And then our user base is growing rapidly right now, which is great. We just updated the subscription model. So I'd like to see a lot more activity on the app, right? And yeah, of course... Um, from a monetary standpoint and an app value standpoint, that's great, but it also shows the concepts working, right? And mm -hmm. people are connecting, people are going on dates. Um, yeah, I, I just want to get our user base up. I want to open it up to the country a little bit more, right? Because we're getting a lot of people all over the country asking, you know, why isn't it open in my city? And then we have so many grand ideas for the app, right? A lot of events we're working on. We, I want to make sure those are going smoother and we're putting a lot of effort into those build our team, right? Cause our team's got a lot on their shoulders right now. There's, you know, I'd say five of us that really put a lot of effort into it all day and it takes a toll. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, building that out, alleviating a lot of stress for us and yeah, getting to a point where getting to a point where, you know, you could be full time, cat can be full time, Joey can be full time. And then like, we could actually live better lives because, you know, there's salaries that could be bumped up and just kind of growing the app and also growing the community and getting that word out there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, we can wrap any last thoughts. Um, no, I mean, I just, this, this is awesome, right? Working with you is awesome. Uh, you know, we grow our friendship and grow our work relationship every day. And I would say the best thing about this is that, Every single morning we wake up, we have no idea who we're going to meet. And I don't mean that from a celebrity standpoint. It's just, you know, people like Joel and Joseph, people who are behind the scenes. Yeah. It's uh, it's just so awesome that we have the opportunity and the tools to work with so many different people every day. And every morning you wake up, you have no idea who you're going to work with that day. So it's yeah, cool. It's fun. What about you? Um, what's the question? Um, wrapping up thoughts. Oh, uh what do you see for yourself for the app? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, hopefully we we get some more money coming in and we can we can like you said go full time and really like because I think things things change a lot when something is your main focus yeah. as opposed to the second focus, right? Just a lot because you're 
um, like I think your subconscious mind will think of things and also like just having time like I mean time and energy is such a real thing right like if you like you might have a little bit of time but if your energy's dipping like you really got to fight through like it matters like it does and and managing your your schedule and your energy is, is a huge part of like being successful uh with work especially um so yeah i mean getting the opportunity to go full time would be amazing and I, I think it would really take things to the next level and would be you know able to just be more consistent and and just get shit done basically so that would be that would be the dream because if i go if i go full time that means the app's doing really well right? yeah so well you will be eventually yeah. so yeah. that's Sooner than later yeah. but uh yeah i think the uh one of the main things about being a successful entrepreneur is to not get burnt out so mm. that's a great point but yeah uh, yeah it's awesome cool all right man let's do let's it let's do do another one next year and see how far we've come awesome yeah <laughs>